Hey guys, I thought I'd uh, come on and tell you a little bit about why you need to know this stuff and uh, why it's so important to learn uh, the scales and uh, not the scales in the way they're traditionally taught where it's box patterns but the actual notes on the neck and then understand the mechanics of the scales what they mean so that you can build your own scales and I'll show you right now the reason why I said the other day there's a hundred thousand jazz scales and I'll explain to you the why and we'll explain to it explain it to you in the way the lottery works okay this this will make it easy for you to understand because everybody knows when you play the lottery there's only six numbers I think maybe five I think I forget there's one, there's like the Powerball number, that number five or number six. I think it's only five numbers, but I forget. But we'll just go with uh, six numbers. So, say you have six numbers. You have you have just those six numbers, right? Now, those numbers can be in any pattern. So there's literally millions of patterns just for these, just for these six. So now if we take that and we do this, now we got seven, right? But then we also have A and B right? But we also have a sharp in the middle of it. We have B and C which are together and then we have a sharp or a flat and then we have D and, D and C or D and E which is another flat, a sharp or flat and then we have E and F which are together and then we have another sharp here and then we have another sharp here. So you see, and the thing you need to understand why this stuff is really easy for, for you, the, why, it, why it's really easy to understand, is there's actually, no matter what scale you're playing, there's only seven notes. And then the eighth note is the root. So there's only seven notes in a scale. But when you think of, uh, people are always wanting to know like how to play in a way that's m melodic, that's melody. It's mel it's, it has a sound, you know, instead of just sounding like you're running up and down the scales, which what's a, a lot of guys get stuck in patterns to where they just, and that's because they're always running box patterns. They're never playing with the band, and they're always just running up and down scales, up and down scales, up and down scales. So when they play, they just kind of go... Well, the way to get out of that is to think about this. Say we're only going to take three notes, okay? So say we're on the A fret, we're on, which is the fifth fret on the top string, all right? So we got A, A sharp, and B, all right? That's what we have, A, A sharp, and B, okay? So we have A, A sharp, and B. Just three notes, right? And most people are just going to go, do do do, right? Or do do do, right? Well, what about do do do, right? What about do 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 do, right? What about do 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 do, you know? So you see how many ways there are to play just three notes? Which is why when you see people like Steve Vai going blah, 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 and, it, and it sounds very complicated, but when you look at what he's playing, it doesn't really look complicated. It's because he's playing one string and he's using patterns and he's practiced these patterns so that his fingers look really weird when they're moving. And it's because he's not going dun, 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 like that. He's going dun 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 So his hands are doing this, you know, and that's why. And the way you do that is you practice patterns. And 
the way I like to teach my students to play, to to figure this, and people are always asking guitar players, how do how do I get faster? How do I get faster? Well, this is the easy way. I'll show you. Okay, this is the easy way to get faster and to practice this kind of uh, running. We got four fingers, right? You know. So what I want you to do is just practice up and down picking. Most guys get stuck when they're playing chords of just doing that over and over again. Just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it, it has no musical musicality to it. It's very, uh, uh, it, it just doesn't sound musical. Or they go, you know, that's just, it's not musical at all. So what I want you to do is go, you practice that first. And try to stay in time, you know. Go one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Once you do that, then go. Once you've done that a million times, you know, practice that for a couple of weeks or a week, and then move on to doing. And then slide up, one. Then slide up, one. That'll help you get faster. And you just do that over and over and over again until you're just like blah, 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 like that. Now, the other reason why we want to know this stuff, we want to know this stuff, we're only going to take uh, six notes just from the open string to the fifth fret. That's it. And we're going to go from the high to the low. Now, what, I've, what I didn't tell you the other day, and I'll tell you now, is when you're look, when you're always thinking about the chord, whether it's in the first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, you're gonna see um, the lowest note tells you that, and the notes of the chord that you're playing. So you'll you'll hear notes of the chord, and if you know what they are, you know they're three, right? So say you're playing a C chord, so you got a C, right? Well, what comes after the C if you've got thirds? Basically, you're going up in thirds right your whole step and then another whole step and then another whole step and another whole step so you're going up in thirds right so you have a c d and the next one's going to be e f g which means a c chord is c e g right so if you if you think about how this is put together you know that if you want to make it a augmented chord then you're going to go g sharp right so now you're going to be playing a C major augmented you know knowing where these are at on the neck allows you to build chords but if you see a chord with these same notes in it but you have this what you will see is you will see C slash G sharp which means it's a C you'll see C which has a little circle that's C augmented with G in the base which means it's a this is what if you move this up here this is going to be a second inversion okay because this is the last note now if you also see here an E then you're going to see this. It's still going to be C augmented, but it's going to be with E in the bass. Okay? So that's how these look when you look in, in chord dictionaries. And I'll, I'll show you on, an, on a later thing why you should never buy a chord dictionary. You, all you need is a piano, and you can find any chords you want to know. Doesn't, you don't need, you don't need a, anything other than that. And if you know where the notes are on the fret, 
You don't need a chord dictionary. Never. You never need to buy a chord dictionary. Now this is going to be our Going to be the nut so this is the bottom now when you're looking at tablature and things like that this up here is always the low note this up here is always the high note so we're going to start off with e this is e this is e right this is a this is d this is g this is b right so those are our tunings. That's open tuning, what's known as 440. All right? And that's because there's actually 440 pounds per square inch of pressure on the neck at that tuning. We're actually in the megahertz scale. There's, you used to have to tune guitars with a, with a little oscilloscope. And it, at this tuning, it's 440. Okay? So there's 440 beats or whatever. So that's, they used to call this 440. Basically, this is standard tuning known as standard tuning. So what we're going to do is we have now first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and fifth fret. All right. So we have an, an F in A sharp, a D sharp, a G sharp, B and C, right? And then an E and an F, right? Now we have F sharp, C, so we're going to have a C sharp. And then by knowing where all these sharps are at, it helps you out as well, you know, because it'll, it'll later on when you're learning how to play this stuff and you know it, when you know what scale you're playing and you're just it's it becomes very natural and intuitive. You know where these notes are at, you know where the sharps are located on the neck. So when you're playing something, and you're thinking, okay, I'm playing in this scale and it has two sharps and the sharps are such and such. When you're playing, you're not thinking about it, but you're going to intuitively know that the two sharps that you're playing, where they're located at in the neck. So when you want to hit those notes, it's very easy for you to find out where they are all over the neck. And you'll know where they're at because it's very simple to know where they're at when you learn this stuff. Okay? So, let's just go all the way out. We'll go all the way out. So we have F sharp, and then we have G, and then we have G sharp, and like I say, it's also flat. It's not just G sharp. And we have A, and we have C, so here's going to be a D, a sharp, and then we have uh, E right here. And then we have G, so we're going to have an A, we have sharp, and we're going to have a B, and we have a C. Oh wait, what am I doing? <laughs> C, I'm trying to do this quickly so you guys can see. Um, then we're going to have a D, D sharp. So we're going to have an E, an F. See, so there's those two notes. See those two notes right there? So when you're playing, there's your two notes, right? And then you got, um, and then where do we got also? There's our B and C. So you got dun, 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 right? And then dun, dun. So see if you wanted to do like a little run. Dun, 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 dun. Right? And then you have uh, down here, you know, C and B. So, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, right? So you have all your, all your double notes there, which shows you where you're at. Cool. So there's C. And then we have F sharp. And we have G. And then we have, um, we have a B, we have C, so here, here's another one, B, C, and another B, C, see, and another B, C, see how that works, and then you have a sharp, you have D, 
up here we have F, we have F sharp, and these are going to be the same as down here. So we're going to have G, we're going to have G sharp, and we're going to have an A. Okay, so now we want to find chords. We want to find how the chords work, all right? So we're going to look for A's, okay? Let's, let's start with an A. We'll start at the small ones, all right? So we're going to do A, and A is going to have an A, B, C, so right? So you just count up like that. A, B, so you got C, D, E. Right? So you got A, C, E. Alright? So we're going to look for A, C, and E. Alright? But, we want to make sure that we have, here's our A, right? In the low, in the low registers, there's an A. Let me get a different color so we can kind of see where they're at. Let's see. This is our A. Right? We have a C. And we have an E. Right there. So see, there's a chord. You got A, C, E. So you can play it kind of like a C pattern, A, C, E, right? And then you can also do a bar chord where you have an A here. There's an A, E, and a C. So if C's in the bass, or actually we'd have E in the bass, because if you play the E down here and then you have a C and an E, you're going to have an E in the bass, which means it's going to be E, C, A, like that. Which means you're going to be in third and second inversion. Okay? So you see what I'm saying? Why you want to know this stuff? Okay, let's see where else we're at. Um, we have the E here, obviously. We have the A here, obviously. We have the E here, obviously. We have um, a C here. A C here. Um, an A, an E here. An A here. see. I think that's it. Yeah. A, C, and E. A, C, E. Yeah. So see, by knowing where all these are at on your neck, that's going to allow you to build chords in any way, in any shape, in any pattern. This is just up to the fifth fret. You go all the way up to the twelfth fret. So you have, like I say, twelve, fourteen, different you have a bunch of different patterns just right there that you can make on on building your chord shapes you can do them in two notes so you could do it in just a and c you could do it a and e you could do it c and e you know whatever you want so yeah now let's go with another color and now we're going to look for say a b okay Let's look for B, C, D. I did it again. There's D, B, C, D, E, F. All right? So, B, D, F. That's a B chord, B, D, F. Right? So we have, and I've got a blue right now. All right? So we got B. There's F, there's a D, there's a B, there's an F, there's a D, there's a B, there's an F, there's a D, okay, so see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes just by the fifth fret we got nine ways of playing it nine different notes to play and remember what I said about the lotto there's only six notes there's only six numbers and they can be played in billions of ways so this is the reason why when you look at the way scales are played there's so many different ways to put scales together to put just seven notes in, in, a, in a scale and if you look at the way I showed you with only three notes with only three notes just like an A, A sharp, B. 
just those three notes, you can put them together in so many different combinations in so many different ways that when you start doing three notes per string or four notes per string you'll hear guys talk about, you got one, two, three, four. So like I was saying, when you do one, two, three, four, after you do that, what you start doing is you start After you do that, what you start doing is instead of going like that, you go See, I'm going See? There's so many different ways to just do those four notes, you know? I mean, there's so many different ways to just practice that. And you need to get your hands to where they can do different things besides just going. If you just practice that all the time, that's all your fingers are going to know how to do. A lot of this is about muscle memory. So if you want your fingers to be able to do something other than... you got to practice something other than that, you know? A lot of this is about practice makes perfect, and if you don't practice it, you're not going to be perfect, right? We're going to look for a C chord, right? So we got C, D, E, F, G. So C, E, G. That's your C chord, right? So we got, uh, let's see, we got C, there's our C, we got E, we got uh, G. Okay, we'll just go on each one. So we got C, no E's. There's an E here. G, C, G, E, C, E, G. There you go. Okay. So you got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, eleven notes for G in just five five frets. Okay? So this is why you want to think outside the box. When you're writing music, you can very easily find notes and find different ways to write chords and play different inversions of the such chords you know like when you think about these you know these are just the way to play standard three note chords what if we add the seventh to the chord then you end up with jazz chords you have that really full bodied sound where you have jazz chords then you have flat fives you have sixes you have sevens you have thirteens where you'll hear people talk about the 13s. Once you understand this kind of stuff, it's very easy to understand what they're talking about because there's only eight notes in the scale, right? And you come back to the root. So what's the 13? If eight is that, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? So it's just the fifth, but it's the fifth above the root. The fifth, so it's the 13th note but basically it's just the fifth above the octave of the of the next root. So if you're starting in C, then you go to the next C, and then you go up five notes, and that's the note they're talking about. So when you hear them talking about thirteens and you know elevens and, and all these different things, sharp eleven, they're just talking about, you know, if you're talking about the eleventh note, then you're talking about eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's the fourth, the octave above where you started at. So if you're starting in, say, E on the guitar, then it's the octave, which would be the next E, and then the fourth above that, you know, in the scale, okay? The fourth in the scale. 
So it's it's pretty easy. And that note, you're going to sharp or flatten whatever it says. So it's really not hard to understand this stuff. So let's do this. A, C, E, F, G. So we got a G. Okay, that's our seventh. B, D, F. So G, A. So we got an A. That's our seventh. C, E, G, A, B. All right? So there's our seventh there. Now once you get to where you're doing these chords, I'll show you why a lot of times you can play chords all the way up the neck and all the way down. And there's another reason why you want to know this stuff. A lot of guys want to know how to do sweeps, how to do sweep picking. Typically sweep picking is done with chords. So if you want to sweep pick and play like two notes per string or one note per string and sweep down and sweep back up, the way you do that is you sweep typically chords. You're doing arpeggios of chords. And by knowing where these are at, you can see here, this is a blue, 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 and blue. So you can go do 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 right? That allows you to play a sweep of a chord, all right? So knowing these things is what you need to know to to do the sweep. So if you want to go and play sweeps and up and down the frets and stuff like that, the way you do that is typically they're going to sweep chords. So if you're playing a song and it's in G, D, A, and you want to sweep G, you want to sweep D, sweep A, and then sweep back to G, that's how you do it. It's right there. <coughs> Without knowing this, you're not going to be able to know how to do that. Okay. So now, something that you might notice with this stuff, what's really cool once you get to the sevenths, there's a B. Let's do this since we don't have any orange. You'll start to notice a pattern. The pattern that you notice is there's a B. There's a B, right? There's a C. There's a C. There's an E. There's an E. There's an A. There's an A. There's a G. There's a G. Right? The only two that's not there is the D and the F, which they've played together. Remember what I told you? They play those together. Now you'll hear people talk about pentatonic scales. Pentatonic means five. So that's only five notes of a scale. So you can very easily find pentatonic scales. And basically all you do is you play five notes once you know where this stuff is at, you can build yourself a scale using pentatonic scales, five note per string scales, you know. So, <clears throat> like I say, knowing where this stuff is at, we already know these notes are already up here, right? So everything we need to play, an A, a B, and a C chord with the seventh is already up here. And once you practice this stuff, and you know that where, where all these sharps are located at, you know, if you're playing a major chord without sharps, because a lot of these chords actually have sharps in them, uh, the way the way that it's, it's the way that it reads on the fretboard, it'll actually have sharps in it. So you may actually have to play sharps. This is just for basic information that I'm showing you guys. <clears throat> you know where all those sharps are at. You also know what those sharps are and what the flats are because they're flats and sharps basically. So once you know where all those are located at, and like I say, this is only five frets, so you can get this far in six days. Six days of learning each one of these per day, and you might even be able to go faster than that if you if you uh, know what something is. You know, if you get, if you quickly learn it, go to the next one then. You know, and get it, get it done quick, and then go back to the beginning, and then try to do it. Try to remember all of it. And you want to get to where you can snap it off. You know, you want to snap it off. You don't want to be like, and then it's, um, uh, you don't want to be like that. You want to be like, it's F sharp, G sharp, you know, blah, 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 just flap them off, you know, to where you know what you're, know what you're looking at. 
And the quicker you get at doing that, the quicker it's going to be for you to play. When you say, okay, I'm going to play in an F sharp, augmented, diminished, you know, something like that. And you're, you're just, you just find those chords. And just, you can work on doing that, you know. Just say, okay, today I'm going to sit down. I've learned all the notes on the scale. It took me a month. I learned all the notes on the scale. Okay, I want to go through and I want to find every G major augmented chord in every configuration. G major augmented seventh chord. So that would mean you have an augmented and a seventh together, you know? So that would mean you're looking at this with an augmentation. The E is augmented, you know? Something like that. Very strange chord. But I mean, you know, just something like that. Just something crazy. Something that really doesn't really exist, but maybe you like the way it sounds. Who knows? You, that's how you come up with strange chords. So you look for every configuration first inversion second inversion third inversion learn them all and just go three in just a three thing pattern then do in a four thing pattern you know where are they all located at play them in sweep you know play them in a sweep pattern sweep it then go back you know find sweeps that go this way find sweeps that go this way find sweeps that work horizontally chords that work horizontally Find scales that work horizontally. Then find scales that work the, the way that you'll see a lot of uh, professional guitar players play, which is called linear. And that means you're going this way, down the frets. You're going this way. And then you're going to come back up, you know. So you're going to play two or three notes per string, and you're going to be doing what's known as string skipping. And by doing that, you're going to play some notes here, you're going to play some notes here, then you're going to come back here and play some notes here, and then play some notes here. Then you're going to come back and play some notes here, and then you're going to play some notes here, and then you're going to come back and play some notes here, and then play some notes here. And you're basically going, and you're going back up and down and up and down, all the way down the frets. And that gives you that really cool kind of Steve Vai, Joe Satriani tone. And it sounds very complicated to, when you hear that stuff. And it's very hard for people that don't work with this stuff to sit down and learn it. But it's not actually that hard to learn. It takes time. Yes, it takes a lot of time and a lot of devotion to learn this stuff. But a lot of guys put a lot of mystique on top of it and make it seem harder. And because they build it up so much, you know, like like I say, there's jazz court, jazz scales, there's 100,000. When somebody says something like that to you, you go, oh, fuck, I'll never learn 100,000 fucking scales, and you just kind of give up. Well, it's it's you don't have to know 100,000 scales. You just have to know a scale for a song that you want to play. So you know, bring it back, bring it down, <laughs> you know, just bring it down a little bit, you don't have to think that hard, you know, just start out like this, you know, start out learning like that, and you can, you can get better at this stuff, you don't have to get stuck in boxes, don't learn boxes, you don't need boxes, learn where the notes are on the scale, and then learn what the scale is, because like I say, there's only seven notes in a scale, unless you're talking about pentatonic, then there's only five notes, so, once you learn what the notes are in the scale, and you can practice them on a piano, find them on the guitar, and then find your own scale. Build. You can find out you don't need pop box patterns. Once you know where the notes are at, and you can locate them quickly. You can say, okay, I need an A. So there's an A here, there's an A here, there's an A here. You know, and I need the G, and there's a G here, and a G here, and a G here, and I need an F sharp, and there's this, and you know, and you'll just very quickly, you know, and you. You get to the point, this is why I was saying, when you get to that, you know, 20-year mark, like I've told you, where guys step away from the theory, you get to the point where you're looking at the guitar like that, where you're, somebody's playing a song, and they say, well, you go, what are you going to play, you know, and they say, well, we're going to play the song, we're going to play this, uh, you know, song in, in A minor, and you tell them, well, I can't play it in A minor, I can't sing it in that, you know, that's, that's too high or too low for me, uh, can we play it in C sharp or C? you know, or something like that. So that everybody transposes. Transposing means you change something from one key to another. Like say you're taking a saxophone part and you transpose it so that you can play it on a violin because you're going to have to go up with it. So that's all that means. So everybody transposes it over and then you start playing the song. And when you're playing the song it's very easy for you to say, okay I'm in C and there's only seven notes in the C. And if you look at your fret and you know where all the notes are for that C scale, you don't even have to think about how to play. You're already like, and you just play the notes. Because 
you know where the notes are. And that's why it's so important to learn this stuff. You have to learn this stuff. You want to know where those notes are at because then you don't have to think. And it doesn't become patterns to you. It becomes notes. You want it to be notes and not patterns. Don't get stuck in a box. If you get stuck in a box, you're going to stay in a box. And that's not what you want. You want to know what the notes are. You want to know where they're located out on the fret. You want to understand what the scale is. And then play the scale and find the notes of the scale. And know that the root note is the beginning of the scale. So you can play patterns, and you'll find out when you're playing like this that there's a lot of patterns and that become evident. And the only thing that makes the pattern different from the other patterns is the beginning note, the root note, which is whatever scale that you're in. If you're in A minor, A, B sharp, B flat, whatever, that first note is what makes the difference. That's what will tell everybody's ear what scale you're in. And that's all. That's the. It's not mystique. There's no mystique to it. A lot of guys will build it up and make it seem like it's really, really difficult to understand this stuff. It's not. You just have to have a basic understanding, and then build your knowledge from there. And I'm going to teach you guys how to build your knowledge. It's very simple. Okay. So if you guys like this video, share, like, and subscribe, and. Uh, uh, keep an eye out for more of these uh, theory videos. A lot of guys have been requesting my theory videos. Uh, you know, it's what, it's what I do for a job. It's what I do for a living. I've done it for over 30 years. So, you know, it's what I've done since about 1990. So, um, yeah, if you, guys, if you guys have any questions, comments, you want to know some stuff, you want me to talk about something in one of these theory videos, maybe you don't understand something, you want me to go into some detail so that you can understand something that that uh, you're, you've been trying to understand. I'm going to talk in the next video maybe about uh, how, the, how the circle of fifths work because that's a very difficult thing for guys to understand. It's actually very simple but a lot of people don't know how to, under, to explain it or they do know how to explain it but they want to make it seem more difficult than it really is. So if you've got uh, things that you want to know like that uh, just request in the section below and I'll uh, see what I can do. So have a nice day.